Top 5 Monsters and Cryptids of Canada Known for being a country of friendly folks, Canada is one of the most pleasant places you can visit. But hiding behind its friendly people, lush greenery, and nearly 2 million lakes are stories of very strange monsters and cryptids. These are the top 5 Monsters and Cryptids of Canada. Number 5. Wahila Known as one of the most versatile predators on the planet, the canids are truly impressive. This family includes domestic dogs, jackals, dingoes, wolves, foxes, and more. They're not just impressive with their hunting skills, but that they've also spread out all across the globe, living on every single continent. Even though we've cataloged most of the canids, it's possible that in remote locations there are still species we've yet to encounter the Wahila is said to be one of these creatures. Found in the Nahani Valley of the Northwest Territories, the Wahila is described as a cross between a bear and a wolf. For decades, the local Indian tribes of the valley have told stories of an enormous wolf-like beast roaming the region. But while the creature looks similar to a wolf, it's said to be larger with a heavier build, shorter legs, and is extremely aggressive. It's also described as having larger feet with wider spaced toes compared to that of a wolf. The feet act as snowshoes when traversing during winter. One eyewitness described the beast as simply looking like a wolf on steroids. Unlike wolves that hunt in packs, however, the Wahila is said to be a solitary hunter. Many of the indigenous tribes even attribute it with supernatural powers. Curiously, the Nahani Valley, which is the creature's main territory, is also steeped in mysterious occurrences. In fact, the valley has gained itself a rather ominous and gruesome nickname as it's called the Headless Valley among locals. The reason is that for decades, people who dared venture into the area have been found dead and all the corpses found headless. The first of these were the McLeod brothers in 1908. The two went into the valley prospecting for gold, but for a whole year nothing was heard from them until their headless bodies were found by a river. Years later, another Swiss prospector suffered the same fate, followed by a miner found in the area with his head cut off as he lay in his sleeping bag. Ali, the Naha tribe, disappeared from the region years prior to the first headless corpse being found. Why they chose to leave, though, no one knows for sure. Many parts of the valley remain unexplored, and it's said that the Wahila could be the reason for the deaths. Some reports of this beast have also come from Alaska, Ontario, and even northern Michigan. Many agree that this beast is a sort of wolf species, but some argue that they're remnants of the bear-dog population from prehistoric times. These creatures once roamed the land and are thought to have died out two million years ago. Others say the Wahilas are relatives of the direwolf population that were rampant during the Pleistocene era. Today, many still avoid exploring the Nahani Valley further out of fear, they'll be the next ones to be found headless. Number 4. Wendigo Popular in some Native American legends, the Wendigo is a cryptid most famous among the Algonquins. They've been reported in much of North America and all along the Atlantic coast and Great Lakes area. Roughly translated as the evil spirit that devours mankind, or cannibal, the Wendigo is said to have such an insatiable hunger for human flesh that even if it feeds, it continues to grow hungry for more. This curious hunger reflects in its physical appearance as they often project thin physiques with sallow or yellowish skin. Their eyes glow and they bear fangs along with long tongues. Some of the tribes describe the creatures being giants or at least much larger compared to regular human beings. Legends say when dingoes are created when a human resorts to cannibalism to survive. This wasn't uncommon back in the day, especially during the harsh Canadian winter months. Native Americans and settlers in remote regions often found themselves with no option but to cannibalize their dead in order to survive. As for sightings, they have been reported for centuries. During the 1800s, a Wendigo appeared in a small town of Rousseau in northern Minnesota. According to the people, when a Wendigo is first spotted, death is likely to follow. The town was plagued with several deaths over the course of years, but eventually they died down along with the story of the Wendigo as well. 
Another popular story related over the years is that of Jack Fiddler. He was an OG Cree chief known for having the power to defeat and kill Wendigos. Most often, family members would ask for Fiddler to kill their own family members because they were becoming a Wendigo, having an insatiable desire to kill and eat human flesh. In 1907, Fiddler, together with his brother Joseph, were arrested by the Canadian authorities for killing a female. Fiddler told them that he only killed the girl because she was transforming into a Wendigo, but nonetheless, he was placed in prison. However, he was granted pardon, but never got to experience it since he died three days before it was set to take effect. Curiously, the term Wendigo is considered a mental issue or psychosis that occurs in humans. This psychosis is a syndrome that creates an intense craving for human flesh and the fear of becoming a cannibal. Curiously, many of the people who suffer from this psychosis are situated within the Great Lakes of Canada and the United States. The psychosis normally becomes present during winter months among groups or people who live remotely or isolated in heavy snow for long periods. The symptoms first appear as loss of appetite, nausea, and vomiting. Eventually, though, they transform into a craving for human flesh and at the same time an intense fear of turning into a cannibal. This type of psychosis has been reported for hundreds of years in the area. In fact, in 1661, a document by the Jesuits states of how this condition affected their deputies and made them so ravenous for human flesh that they pounce upon women, children, and even men like veritable werewolves and devour them voraciously without being able to appease or glut their appetite. Today, many still report sightings of the Wendigo, especially in northern Ontario. Most people who report these are trappers, traders, and townspeople alike. Number 3. Ogopogo With more than 2 million lakes sprawled across the country, it's no surprise Canada has its fair share of lake serpents and monsters. And one of the most well-known of these is the Ogopogo. Considered as America's Loch Ness, the Ogopogo resides in Lake Okanagan in British Columbia. Reports of the monster predate Nessie in the media by about seven years. The Ogopogo was acknowledged and reported in 1926 by Roy W. Brown, an editor for the Vancouver Sun. He stated too many credible people have reported seeing the creature that it's hard to dispute it as fact. In fact, sightings of the Ogopogo actually date back all the way to the 1800s. As for what it looks like, this creature is said to measure 1 to 2 feet in diameter and about 15 to 20 feet long. Its head is likened to a goat or horse and it's often mistaken for a log in the water. Well, there have been a number of popular sightings, some of the most famous include one that occurred on July 2, 1947 when several boaters saw a creature at the same time. One of them, a man named Mr. Cray, said the creature had a long body that had to be at least 30 feet long. He noticed five undulations protruding from the water while the rest of it was underneath. He also described it as having a forked tail and it would occasionally submerge itself in the water and then slowly break up to the surface again. Another sighting came in 1959 when two sets of couples saw a large creature with a snake-like head and blunt nose swimming about 250 meters behind them in their motorboat. They watched the animal for about three minutes, then it submerged in the water completely and disappeared. Another sighting happened in 1989 when hunting guide Ernie Giroux and his wife were standing on the banks of the lake and saw a large animal with a round head. It measured about 15 feet long and Giroux described it as swimming gracefully, yet really fast. There have been many other sightings throughout the years. Most recently in 2015, Bill Stesiak was out on his condo balcony when he saw a creature's head pop up from the water. He grabbed his camera and shot four consecutive photos before the creature then disappeared. Many of the people reporting the sightings are all credible, but still today, the Ogopogo remains a mystery. Many think that the creature is still there in the lake, just waiting for the day when someone finally proves its existence once and for all. Number 2. Adlet At first glance, you might think the adlet is the precursor or even the same as a werewolf. Originally hailing from North America Inuit legends, 
The adlet looks like the classic werewolf except that these creatures are not shapeshifters. Legend states the adlet was born from a woman named Neveriasiang, who gave birth to these half-dog creatures. While living with her father, Severe Kong, the woman refused to take a husband and always said no to suitors. Instead, she decided to marry a dog named Jikang. She then gave birth to ten of their children, five of which were born as dogs, while the other five were adlets, creatures with a human body and wolf-like legs. Jirkang relied on his father-in-law to provide food for his family, but since he was unhappy with this arrangement, he ended up drowning and killing the dog. In an act of vengeance, Navira Siang told her children to attack her father, biting off his hands and feet. Then she sent half of her children inland, where they interbred with other humans. Others crossed the oceans and were said to be the ancestors of Europeans. Those who remained with their mother became cannibalistic warriors and blood drinkers. The adlets are said to be covered in red fur with sharp talons on both its hands and feet. They also carry a pronounced snout with pointed ears and long tails, while their eyes glow in a bright yellow hue. Even more, the adlets are ruthless killers stalking prey and roaming around the northern regions of America like Quebec, Newfoundland, Labrador, and even Greenland. They will feed on anything but have a particular taste for human flesh and warm blood. Usually they hunt in packs like common wolves and are led by an alpha male. The leader is often distinguishable since it's bigger and more ferocious than the others. Attacks are preceded by mournful and piercing howls, which often subdue the prey or paralyze them with fear. Once the adlet attacks, they take time to kill their prey. Their strong jaws can crush bones and reduce the victims to a pulp within just minutes. To stop the beast, fire or silver is needed. Adlets fear fire more than anything, however, if they are desperate, they will still attack a hunter bearing a torch. Another story relates that they are near-invincible creatures who heal quickly and save for fire and silver. Nothing can kill an adlet. Number 1. Manipogo Canada is no stranger to lake monsters. We've encountered the Ogopogo earlier, but did you know there's another lake monster said to be hiding in Lake Manitoba? It's called the Manipogo. Named in 1957, it's described as being anywhere from 12 to 50 feet long. It has a muddy brown body with large humps, usually the one showing above the water, and a sheep-like head. The existence of the Manipogo has been recorded in claims since the 1800s. The local natives in the area have also told tales of famous serpent legends found in Lake Manitoba. One of the first well-documented sightings of the creature happened in September of 1909. Fur trader for the Hudson Bay Company, Valentine McKay, reported seeing a large creature in the water. In 1935, timber inspector C.F. Ross and a friend saw a creature that they described as looking like a dinosaur with a single horn on its head. In 1948, another sighting was reported. This time, the witness said he saw the serpent rise out about six feet from the lake's water and give some sort of animal cry. The sightings continued on into the 50s and 60s. By 1989, a family visiting from Minneapolis stayed at Shallow Point for a camping trip when they saw a creature that they said had many humps about 80 feet from off the lake shore. In 2004, a commercial fisherman named Keith Haddon reported that his fishing nets were torn up by what seemed to be an ocean shark or a killer whale while he was fishing in the narrows of Lake Manitoba one day. He said the fishes inside the nets were not nibbled on, but instead torn in half in what looked to be huge bites. Various sightings were also seen afterwards, often involving witnesses seeing humps in the water. Today, the legend of the Manipogo lives on. There are those that are skeptical of the idea of a serpent living in the lake. They believe it might just be a giant sturgeon or some form of whale that is yet to be identified or discovered by science. Several attempts at finding carcasses or a breeding population of the creature have been launched, but for now, there's no concrete evidence found. So they are with the top five monsters and cryptids of Canada. We may have advanced technology to help us uncover the mysteries of this world, but there's still a lot we don't know about our planet. With new animals being discovered every day, 
it's likely there are still many creatures just waiting to be discovered. If you like this video, then remember to subscribe to our channel and check out some of our other Cryptid and Creatures videos. We have new videos coming out every Wednesday and Saturday for you to enjoy. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.